Gracias. gracias. Bueno, siguiendo con el, con el programa, eh, y también en línea con lo que planteamos en un inicio, de poder tener una, un primer Metric Day eh, con, con una variedad, ¿cierto? Saliendo no solo de la consultoría de Metriplica, sino de lo que estamos viendo con Partners. Eh, y, y justamente hoy hemos querido invitar a Kevin Dumbbell. Kevin, are you, are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for having you here. And um, let me introduce you in Spanish uh, in the first time, uh, in first moment, because uh, you have an interesting profile, interesting CV in Spanish. So let me introduce you in Spanish. Kevin is es director de ingeniería de ventas en Clicktail. Clicktail es básicamente una herramienta que para quienes hemos trabajado en analítica digital ha estado largo tiempo en la industria colaborando en lo que respecta al Customer Experience Analytics. Eh, Kevin tiene más de 20 años de experiencia en marketing e, eh, y en inversiones que, que los ejecutivos de nivel C, los C-Level, ¿cierto? Están haciendo en la actualidad en tecnologías que dirigen y miden el impacto de su experiencia digital. Por lo tanto, hoy eh, Kevin eh, nos va a compartir la experiencia que tiene y la experiencia que tienen como Clicktail eh, en el concepto que llamamos más allá del web analytics, experience analytics. Kevin, uh, please uh, introduce yourself, or introduce Clicktail, and obviously tell, uh, tell, us, uh, tell us more about this customer experience analytics and what you're doing now. Um, thanks, well, thank you very much. Thanks for your collaboration. Oh, no, thank you very much for inviting me today. Uh, so Clicktail and customer experience analytics, really what it means is being able to understand the behavior of the customers that are coming to your site, to understand their, their digital body language by being able to look at what they're where they're going what they're doing what they're interfacing with where they may be struggling and how the uh, site or your design can be optimized to make that experience better uh, so very quickly here i'm going to uh kind of turn off my camera and uh i think uh, just to save a little bit of bandwidth here and i'll take you through the presentation so very quickly want to make sure uh if you can see my slides can you see that Yes, we can see. Perfect. It. All right. So with respect to what Clicktail provides with its visibility, we record the visitor sessions that come to a site. We can see the mouse moving. We can see what they're scrolling over, what they're clicking on, and what the people are, are interfacing with. That provides us a very deep data set that we can analyze a number of different ways using our solution. And by virtue of being able to do that, we can tap into the behavior of all of the users that are coming to a customer's site. By being able to understand that, organizations can see what their what content is working. They can get insight as to where there may be breaks or struggle areas on their site. They also get insight into what they want to be able to change from an A-B testing perspective. It enhances the understanding they have in their web analytics, We also provide consulting and data extract capabilities that deepen the understanding that folks have with the data that they have themselves and they can interface it and integrate it with their own solutions. One of the things we like to say at Clicktail is you need to have visibility to what the customer or the visitor is doing when they come to your site. And the, the only way you can understand that properly is to see it from the customer's point of view. And that's why we start all of our analysis with the actual recordings of a customer site. Uh, Clicktail is deployed on the site, a very lightweight tag, and as a result, we can collect that uh, those recordings. And that is kind of the starting point of understanding, almost like as if you were looking over the shoulder of your customer to what the people are doing when they come onto that site itself. The concept is we want to be able to see the customer. And we want to be able to see that customer using their optics. Very often, other solutions that we use, web analytics, A-B testing tools, voice of customer solutions, all of these solutions are great from, with respect to the kind of insights and data that they provide. But they have a tendency to go and use that solution's paradigm with presenting that data. So the information is skewed from either the organization's point of view or from that solution's point of view. And there's a big gap in that. Being able to go into something like Clicktail and see how individual customers and entire cohorts of visitors coming onto your site, entire segments of your population, to see it from their perspective is incredibly eye-opening 
with respect to understanding how your design works and what needs to change. To give you an idea of some of the customers that we're working with at Clicktail, here's an idea of some of the customers that we work with today. These are thought leaders, industry leaders, folks that have maintained the dominance in their various areas inside the organization, apart inside of their organizations, Microsoft, Fandango, uh, Jansport, Avis, IHG, just to give you an idea of some of the companies that are utilizing Clicktail in our services and our software to be able to transform what they're doing with customers today and really empower their organization for change. So what is our the Clicktail platform? Well, as I mentioned before, it starts with being able to record the visitor solutions that are the visitor sessions that are coming onto their site. That provides an organization the visibility into the customer's behavioral data, whether we're talking about individual recordings or entire groups of recordings around aggregates of, of segments of users that are coming onto the site. We have integrations with third party solutions, Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, A-B testing solutions, voice of customer solutions, chat solutions, and more that allow you to be able to not only see the data that we present, but utilize those tools that you use for managing your business to see the clicktail data in the, with that same lens. A very common thing that gets done with our, with our customers is they'll integrate us with their web analytics solution and then use those segments to parse the visualizations and recordings that they're presenting. Someone seems to have a loud uh, laptop in the background. Is it possible to mute the, uh, the other users? Uh, with respect to that as well, we, we also have APIs for integrations with a number of different solutions so that the data that we have can be exchanged with those solutions in real time. And I'll give you an idea by kind of pivoting over to an example of our solution set and let, give you a, sort of a, a, a quick look-see of what we provide. We have two different platforms. One are our analyst tools, and the other ones are is more of our business reporting solution. The business reporting solution is what we call the Clicktail Experience Cloud, and that's where we're going to start our conversation today. So one quick moment as I pivot over to that, that area. There we go. As I mentioned before, a Clicktail, Clicktail starts its data collection with actual recordings. This is our recording tool here, and I did a quick capture off of one of my customer sites to give you an idea of what this looks like. The replay tool executes very similar to a DVR or any media playing tool that you might be familiar with. This solution works out of the box with most sites, requires very little configuration in order for to, it to be working. The yellow dot you see moving around is me working with their solution, the different clicks that I'm working with to change my different options. And you can see me navigating through their site. The solution also works with single page applications as well as working with more complex sites as well. You can see scroll activity, click activity, hover and hesitation behavior. And this is all the data that we collect not just a visual representation of the visit. Is it? This is not just a video file. We're actually listening to the DOM and listening to the and watching and listening to the interactions that the person is having inside of this visit. What did they click? What did they hover over? For how long? How many times did they click? We want to be able to go and collect that not only as a visual representation to replay in these session recordings like the one you're seeing here, but we also want to be able to collect all the data underneath that so we understand not just the visuals of this experience, but all of the metrics about the behavior so that we can cross-reference this with other areas of our site as well. So we can really get a true picture of how individual users and entire cohorts of users might be navigating through the site. So here we'll go. I'm going to give you a quick idea of what this looks like when we aggregate all of the data together. This is the Clicktail Experience Center. With respect to the individual site, we will go in and parse it out in, in, this way, in this manner. So we can create dashboards around the different areas and features or flows that are kind of meaningful to what you want to manage for a customer on a day-to-day -day basis. We can go into each one of these vertical columns that you see 
these represent a page or an area of the site that's important to this to this user. We'll co collect the, the traffic and the navigational information about the people coming to these areas of the site, and also with respect to that, we'll be able to go and show them for the for what they're using to manage their business, their KPIs, their business goals, their technical and operational objectives. We can reflect those for each one of these areas and kind of categorize them underneath and then track how the, the visitors that are coming into the site, how successful they are being relative to those, to those metrics that people are trying to collect. So say for example here, this is, a, this is an entertainment company, they sell tickets online to movies, you can come in, reserve your seat, come in to the theater and instead of having to get in line at the front of the theater to buy your ticket, download the ticket to your phone, show it at the front door and go straight to your seat inside of the theater. In this hypothetical here, I may be the person who's responsible for the theater page. This is where people actually start getting into the funnel to purchase those tickets. I have a number of different KPIs that I'm tracking on that site, whether or not people are engaging in some of my special offers, whether they're changing the dates for a show that they originally came in from. But the thing that's most important to me is that event that they're clicking on, that call to action that gets them into the funnel, which is that they've selected a show to start doing their reservation. You know, I can see right here on this KPI that this is down about 12% from what it was last week. And that's, a, that's very alarming to me if I'm the one responsible for this part of the site. Clicktail can track these in real time, show them to you visually in a dashboard like this, or it can actually even send the information to you as an alert. So if you've got Slack inside of your organization, which a number of organizations do, you can actually send, send out a notification, hey, your KPI has dropped below an acceptable threshold, click here to come in and, take, and do some investigation. That awareness into what's happening on your site is one of the more powerful features inside of Clicktail. All right, so I've seen that this metric has gone down and I want to know what this means. Is this something for me to be alarmed about? or is this just something that's a seasonal change with respect to visitors coming onto my site? When I click on that KPI, I can drill directly into that data. Now, the data inside of Clicktail is extraordinarily rich based on behavioral activity, operational information, tactical information. So what we do in this first step is we organize all the information visually to give even a non-analyst a clear view of what's happening we isolate information that's important and we draw the customer's attention to what they need to see right now. For example, I can see this that, that metric of 37, 32.7 for this week on people clicking on that show. I can see my trend line to see how that compares to where we were last week. It gives me this ability to see these, these two data points in context gives me an understanding of just how bad this problem might be. It's down about 12%, definitely not something I'd like to see. I can also see information related to the behavior of people who are coming onto this page itself. I'm checking now, not only on my page for, for, my, for, the, uh, for, the, for people who are coming in to select shows, but I can act, I'm looking at it from the perspective of everyone who clicked on that button. Because I'm coming into this page with that button selected, I'm seeing not only the metrics for the page, but I'm seeing it relative to people who did and did not select that button, selected show or did not select show. So I can see their behavioral metrics. What's the difference in their engagement time? What's the difference in the scroll reach? How far down the page did they penetrate? This is very important if you've got a very busy page with a lot of content and calls to action that might be sitting low on the page itself. Are people scrolling down far enough to even be able to see those calls to action? It surfaced right here for the end user to see, to make even a business user almost like an analyst. We can track the JavaScript errors they're having on the page and even the number of clicks that are occurring inside of this experience for both the users who are and who are not clicking on the call to action we're trying to measure. Now, if you remember when I was first describing uh, the fact that the data that we collect, collect for Clicktail relative to visitors is extremely rich, those recordings are not just visual, it's actually all of the DOM level and session level act information that we're collecting. When we present it to you here in this view, we parse that information out by a number of segments automatically right out of the box. 
And we can even add additional ones that are specific to that page itself. Like maybe we want to go and take a look at uh, maybe testing that might be taking on that page, or we want to be able to parse out by different features that are on that page itself. Whatever strategy you need to use in order to make sense of the visitors that are coming in to be able to segment on them on the fly, you can do that right here from this view. Now you'll notice that in each one of these segment names that are listed here, the gray buttons you see, these are the individual scores. These are the individual values on each one of those different segments. So say for example, here I have in-page influencers. Those are controls on the page. If I click on one of these, I can see which one it is that's got this score. And it's uh, the people who are actually going in and looking at a feature that they had added to the page uh, relative to the property description. This line you see in the middle, that's the average score. That's my 32.7. And the, the values you see on the right-hand side of this line, those are the values that are adding to the success or adding to that 32.7 number. The ones you see over here on the left-hand side, these are actually detracting from that score. These outliers, this automatic surfacing of anomalies that we do right here at this view set allows you to identify uh, things that are dramatically either uh, dramatically impacting the success of your call to action. So say for example here, I were to click on this one that's way over here on the left-hand side, I can see that our version B test where we had changed the layout of certain amenity features on the page is actually having a very dramatic uh, impact on our overall success. It's underperforming significantly from the other test. And in fact, we because we've associated a dollar value with each transaction lost, we can even immediately quantify right at this level the potential revenue that that struggle or that design change uh, is, is actually costing us. So to quickly kind of summarize what this means, I logged into Clicktail in the morning, I went to my dashboard and I saw that one of my KPIs was underperforming. I clicked on it, I went to this page view you see here in front of you, and Clicktail immediately summarized all that information for me so I could see what was happening and understand the relevance of it. If I go and click on any one of these individual elements, I can see how that element compares to all the other ones that are going on, and I can see how the how that underperformance, in this case, for the ones that are clicking on that new feature, how that's detracting from the overall audience itself. So not just raw data, not just raw uh, information, but we show it in context. So when you click on one of these, you understand what the impact of each individual score means in terms of success for that call to action. And because we've associated a dollar value with this uh, at this time, we understand the potential revenue impact. So I, as the business user, know how big of a problem this is, and I know how to prioritize my response accordingly. So with respect to this, these are this is what we call the Clicktail Experience Cloud. It's designed to empower and enable business users to have an analytic-like view of the data and to automatically do almost like a first-level analysis to surface information that's most important to the customer to use so that they can start engaging with the information and understanding what's going on. We also have another set of tools that enable the uh, and enable uh, the analyst, a full-on set of extraordinarily powerful analyst-level tools. We have the ability to search for and parse out any of, the, any of the session information we collect by a very robust data model. The different filters that you see down here are the ways that we actually parse this information out. Everything from visitor infor environment information, browsers, countries, operating systems, screen resolutions, screen resolutions being extremely important, important ways to be able to parse the audience groups that are coming in to identify potential problems with responsive web design. Traffic sources to understand where they've come from, uh, what marketing channels they may be working with. Original refers if these are coming in from partner sites or if they're coming in from just raw searches out on the internet to understand how those different experiences of how we brought people onto the site in the first place may be impacting the overall success or failure of the groups that are coming in and 
give me an ability to compare side by side the experience of the users that are doing that. Their navigation to understand where they're going, what they've done when they've got there, and the kind of the high level metrics about what they've done, how long they were engaged with the page itself, not, uh, to understand how long they've really been working with the material we have. And then of course, information around their behavior, which is what we call in-page behavior. So we can see what they've clicked on, we can see what they touched, and the events that they've actually executed on when they come in. And if we need to even use integrations with solutions like Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics to bring those segments in and use them as filters for looking at the visualizations. So I can use the language that I report my business on to be able to take a look at what's happening from the uh, from, from inside of the audiences that are coming into my site. When you start to compare these things side by side, it becomes extraordinarily powerful. If you wanted to use the, the search, the, the, the filters I was just describing, the way that we can look at the data, you can get a very different understanding of the cohorts that are coming onto your site. For example, here on the, right, on the left hand side, this is my homepage that I'm bringing people in to try and purchase computers. I can see the way that they're consuming that page. Using my Adobe Analytics integration, I can go and pull in on the right-hand side, I choose my Adobe Analytics segment just specifically for people who are purchasing. And when I do that, I see a very different way that this page is being consumed. If I didn't have the ability to, to use Clicktail to go and parse out the different ways of looking at this content and looking at this view, I would get a very slanted understanding of how people are working with my site. But by virtue of being able to go and use that, that, those segmentation capabilities, I can get a very precise view all the way down to show me what the click activity for that audience is on this call, call to action relative to the other group that's come in here. Right down, those kind of behavioral insights let me understand not only how at an aggregate level folks are using the page, but how the individual elements on that page influence and direct them through the experience. So what there are they, am I confusing them? Are them, am I directing them clearly and smoothly or are they getting confused on other things? If I needed to, I could even drill down on any individual control on that page to pull up the session recordings. If I wanted to see, show me everyone that came in and actually clicked on that buy button. I could go and pull up a list of sessions that included that kind of behavior, replay them and see what the customers were doing and what we had inside of our experience that drove, drove, uh, drove them over to that buy button itself. We can create conversion funnels inside of the Clicktail solution as well. Those funnels can be set up outside and external to my web analytic funnels and my business reporting funnels. These can be used for finding behavioral uh, opportunities to go and observe, not just how people are going through the conversion funnel itself, but I can even click on those people that are actually abandoning at each one of these steps to see why they abandoned, where did they go, what did their experience look like, and why was that different than the folks that came in that were successful through the flow itself. We can extend this over to even form field analytics. So if you've got very complex forms on your site, those forms are very often analogous to almost the, the kind of touch point that you would have with a salesperson on the floor. They become your face and your interaction point with the customer. Those forms have to work well, they have to be intuitive. And if there is any struggle, if there are areas of those forms that are unclear that are making people repeat steps or bail out of the, uh, the flow itself and abandon the process, you wanna see exactly where that's happening and understand which elements inside of that form are not configured correctly. We can show you that inside of Clicktail as well with respect to conversion re reports. We can show you drop reports. And then at any time you wanted to go and see, okay, I see that I'm getting 9.5% of my, my population is actually dropping from this. Which form field is causing people to drop the most? Let me go and take a look at some session replays of people who are abandoning there. Do I have, uh, do I have a, a form field problem? Do I have a form field validation issue? Is this uh, bad instructions or do I actually have an error that's occurring in that page that I need to get my engineers looking at to go and fix? Being able to provide this kind of visibility to the consultants or to your analysts is an extraordinarily powerful way to be able to slice and dice the data. 
when we're looking at those session replays, we can even surface things like JS errors. So you can go for any, any page that you have on your site, you can dive into those JS error reports to understand where those, when, when those JavaScript errors are manifesting and how inside of the session. Maybe they're disruptive, maybe they're silent in the background. By being able to go into the recordings from Clicktail, you can see which ones are which and then prioritize which one of these JavaScript errors you actually need to go and address by understanding which ones are disruptive to the customer's flow and customer's visit. We can also give you visibility into individual page level uh, analysis. We can show you the bounce rates for people that are coming in. Bounce rates are often indicative of either bringing people in to a, to a page incorrectly where it's not an optimal place to make them land, or you've got pages that are suboptimal to what the people were expecting when they got there. Being able to see the bounce rates is a great way to start your analysis on the page if you are a consultant or someone who is, un, who is responsible for analyzing the behavior and the user experience on the page to be able to go and be, um, uh, to, to, to start, your, start finding things and testing hypotheses. Kevin, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, we, we have two more minutes. Certainly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So with respect to Clicktail, there's a number of different unique tools that we have as well that allow folks to not just go and take a look at the data, but also to engage in data science like activities. We have a tool called path identification or path analysis, where we can show you exactly graphically what people are doing, what paths are people taking on the site itself. We can show you the different paths. We can show you what what percentage of your audience is actually following those. And if you want to link these to calls to action and conversion activities, we can show you which one of those paths are the ones that are being most successful. As a result, organizations can utilize these views to better understand and plan for and strategize things like A-B testing, site design and optimization. We have, a, we have a full array of data science capabilities as well, including full-fledged BI analysis, and data extractions that you can pull from our data to integrate with your own stacks, your own tools, or to augment your third-party tools that you're working with. For example, many people bring our solutions into things like Power BI, Domo, and other kinds of high-level reporting tools to aggregate information and give executives and business owners an easy way to get the Clicktail data to understand its value and the insights that it brings. This is a very, very quick, high-level view of what we what is possible inside of Clicktail. It would literally take uh, two or three times the amount of time that we have on, uh, on the phone today to really kind of go over all the different things that we're capable of being able to do. Our core capabilities that I've just been able to touch on, and I hope that we've been able to kind of give you a unique view of the kind of data that's out there and the kind of services that you can engage with to truly understand and deepen your understanding of customer behavior and come up with strategies to improve it and improve the customer's experience on your site. Thank you very much for inviting us today and I hope this was, in, this was uh, informational. No, no, really, uh, well, thank you very much. And uh, we have time for just one, one question. I, I don't know if, if we can respond more by, by email, but the question in, in Spanish first and English uh, before uh, later. Uh, ¿Cuándo deberíamos usar Clicktail si estamos recién comenzando con una estrategia de analítica web con Google Analytics? En inglés, en inglés. When should we use, uh, use Clicktail if we, we, are, if we are starting with web analytics using Google Analytics free? What do you suggest in this case? If you want to go and integrate with, with those solutions, it, it, it may be possible. Uh, but here's one of the things I would definitely say. Even though you've got those kind of analytic tools, you will still want to use Clicktail. Incidentally, Adobe is one of our biggest customers. They use us on all of their pages. The reason why, Adobe Analytics will tell you what is happening in your site at a, at a raw data perspective and a navigation perspective. But what it won't do is tell you why it's happening. And so that's why you want to go and have Clicktail. It's to augment and deepen your understanding. Knowing what happened is the starting point. Understanding why it's happening is truly the understanding you want to get. Uh, and what did this this kind of integration in, in, 
in, in between Clicktail and Adobe or Google Analytics, what can benefits you you can have with uh, integrated uh, both of both of them? One of the most common things that you can use is people use Adobe and Google Analytics for doing their business segmentation to understand the audience segments that are coming into their site. By being able to take those those segments and apply them to Clicktail data, you can use the visualizations, you can use our visualizations to deepen your understanding of what is going on inside of those camp, inside of those segments you've built inside of those solutions. Great. So, so, so you can create a advanced segment in Google Analytics and you can pass this information, this kind of this set of audience into Clicktail to, to make this analysis with this kind of segment, right? That's correct. We'll actually pick up the definition that you're using for Google, and then you can use that as a filter to parse any visualization, search for session replays, whatever you need to do. Obviously, that's awesome because we, we know uh, customer experience analytics or tool like this, the, the, the power is not just in the own reports, uh, but in the kind of information you can get with this uh, behavior, uh, behavior analysis from Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics. So if you can get all the audience without, uh, with a, a card or with, uh, without a card uh, session, you can take this segment and pass into a click tail and understand why with this session replace, with this heat maps analysis, understand why they are behaving in, in this in this case, right? That's absolutely correct. And that w folks sometimes have a ma uh, very interesting reactions when they see what really happens in the segments that they think they understand. Very often, they'll go back and, and change their definitions and refine their strategies for how they even define those, those cohorts and those segments because of the insights and the understanding that the analysis you just described provides. Okay, Kevin, um, we, are, we are on time to, to move ahead with the next session, but I really appreciate your participation. Thank you very much. And obviously we are going to, to share this, uh, your presentation and this recording with all the audience. Um, so thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you very much. You take care.